So one night, <laughs> let me get into it. One night, because he's just so, he's fine. Like he, he's luscious. Um, I was feeling some kind of way. This is, this is about the sexual frustration, right? I was called, I called him. Two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock. I still remember that night. I got up out of bed because I was just like, Lord. This is like maybe um, a couple months after I texted him, right? And we, you know, had that closure. I called him. And I was about to tell him I loved him. I was about to tell him like, yo, I don't know what I was thinking. What are you doing? What are you wearing? We met in college. We met in college and um, I'll call him Mr. Iron Man because he loved Iron Man and he loved the Packers. And if he's watching this video, which I highly doubt because he wasn't even with me being celibate, so I highly doubt he's even gonna watch this. But if he does, he'll know who he is. <laughs> hey! <laughs> the timing was just never right with us. I think if you ever have been in, you live long enough, you may meet somebody and the timing is just off like for some reason every time we would be around each other or you know think about being together whatever it is whether I was with somebody or he was with somebody or whatever he would end up being with somebody or I would be with somebody or I wasn't ready the timing was just always off with us but the chemistry was great we've had amazing dates like all the time like we would have so much fun together um in Florida Texas um, you know, it, we, we had so much fun together and even, um, in Atlanta too. So yeah, he definitely gonna know who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so, um, but you know, by the time we reconnected, um, because the last time I saw him right after college, like a couple years after college, um, I just got into, um, a relationship. Like I was like, okay, I'm getting serious about this guy. And he was like, yo, I really like you. You know, I was like, nope, I'm moving to Miami. And he was like, what? So you moving away? And I was like, yeah. And I kind of brushed him off. It was really mean. I was very mean. I was mean. I'm not even, I, I have to take ownership in that. I was really mean because it's like, I got to push him away. We reconnected and it was great. But when I told him, because this is like, when I was talking to him before, I wasn't celibate. I wasn't, you know, thinking about purity or, you know, trying to live right, at least with my body. I was obviously a believer, but I wasn't, I wasn't doing that. But by the time we reconnected years later, I did make that commitment. And, you know, after we had so many great dates um, in, in Texas and in, in, in um, Atlanta, it's going back to Maryland. And he, here he comes. He's like, you know, um, I like you. I really do. And then this dude, you know, I tell him, I'm like, but I did make a commitment to not have sex anymore until marriage. And he was like... I don't know about that. And then he just like never brought it back up. I just told him, I said, I need you to really think about this because it's something that I'm really serious about. And, you know, so that was that. And then he messaged me. Like we lost contact. Like we, once he realized, you know, the celibacy thing, he didn't really bring it back up and neither did I. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if he's going to come to Maryland. He never did. We just stopped talking. I don't know. It just, I stopped talking to him. He stopped talking to me. And then he reached out to me and, um, I was really resentful because I felt like we have unresolved conflict, you know, and I was really mean when he was contacting me. He contacted me to see how I was doing. He had a client and it was a whole thing. And um, it was horrible. I, it was horrible. My cutoff game was real. Like I ignored it. I deleted and blocked him. Like I literally did that. And that it made no sense because he didn't do anything. He did nothing. It was me. I was the problem. I have some very toxic ways about handling rejection or handling things that are not, you know, moving the way that I thought. And so there was a sermon series that my, my pastor was doing called What Would Jesus Do? And one of the things that Jesus was talking about was, you know, as much as you want to come to church or go and, you know, praise me and say God is so good, but you have this person, that person, that person, you have some so many unresolved conflict get up off the altar and go resolve the conflict and so my pastor in the middle of the sermon was like look there's got to be at least one person you have right now in your life that you need to go and say i'm sorry and and take a hundred percent ownership do not mention what they did do not mention what you you know anything just mention what you felt like you did wrong and i knew it in my spirit 
dear. I mean, there's m multiple people. I'm not even going to lie. But he was at the top of that list because I knew the way I was treating him was not okay. And that was, he didn't deserve it. And it was me more than him. And um, so I, I sent him this email. Hey, I'm not going to say the name. I tried calling the 414 number, but I didn't get a response. I wanted to apologize for how I handled things when you met me, when you sent me that LinkedIn message about your client. It wasn't okay. And it took uh, me a while to finally respond. I was still upset about how things were going since our last phone call. I do care for you. I don't know if you're going to respond back, but if you don't, that's okay. Obviously, I had a spelling error. <laughs> I really wish you the best in your life. I was in Atlanta, and I thought of you and how much fun we had together. Hopefully, you got your podcast going and grad school is going well. Thanks again for being a friend. I just wanted to apologize for how I handled things on my end. It wasn't okay. Like I said, I want nothing but the best for you. I didn't think he was going to respond, to be honest. I was like, he probably going to get this in spam. He's probably never going to respond. But then he did. And so um, we had kind of a closure. But I'm not even going to lie. I was, um, so one night, <laughs> let me get into it. One night, because he's just so, he's fine. Like, he, he's luscious. Um, I was feeling some kind of way. This is, this is about the sexual frustration, right? I was called, I called him. Two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock. I still remember that night. I got up out of bed because I was just like, Lord, this is like maybe um, a couple months after I texted him, right? And we, you know, had that closure. I called him and I was about to tell him I loved him. I was about to tell him like, yo, I don't know what I was thinking. What are you doing? What are you wearing? <laughs> what are you wearing? And what's so crazy is the phone rang. And it rang all the way through to his voicemail and I hung up the phone. He never called back because I don't think that he won. I don't think he got it or two. He just didn't want to talk to me anymore. And that was kind of it. And I was like, God, did he get that call? I don't think he ever got the call. But if he did get the call, maybe he's just like, nope. And maybe he has a girlfriend or whatever it is. I wasn't trying to mess things up. But now that I back and look at it, I'm like, God kind of blocked that. I, I know I know God was in that because I was feeling some kind of way that night. When it, kept, when it came to him, I had to call one of my Bible study ladies to tell me, like, hey, I'm in Atlanta. He's in Atlanta. I'm going to try not to call this man. I'm going to try not to, like, you know, hit him up because, baby. But he may be in a whole relationship and everything. He might even think about me no more. But it was just like, you know, I wanted that accountability because I was back in Atlanta. It was for my business event. But, you know, he just... I have this tie with him. You know, we do have this vibe. We do have this um, soul tie together that has started from when way back when from college all the way up until, you know, recently. Anyways, thanks for watching Live and Purify. My name is Debbie and I'll see you next time. Bye.